Hello, I'm here with Dr. Peter Garriev of the Russian Academy of Sciences. Peter is a developer of some pretty amazing science. Should this science be properly commercialised, it will have a huge impact, a significant impact globally on both food production and human health. There is also with me Dr. Irene Caesar, a co-director of Quantum. Peter is the developer of some pretty amazing science. If this science is correctly commercialised, it will have a huge impact on both wealth, health and also food production. Peter Petrovich. Peter, I'm holding my hands three of your books. Wave Genome, 1994, Wave Genetic Cult, 1997, and Linguistic Wave Genome, 2009. What is the principal difference between your theory of wave genetics and the theory of classical genetics? And what is the practical application of your theory? The difference is as follows. Classical genetics considers the genetic material only as a substance, while we consider it from the point of view of natural constructs. That is, genetic material is a substance that has meanings. This meanings I realize through text. This is not a metaphor. These are real texts. DNA are holograms. This is also not a metaphor. Chromosomes are created in some holographic continuum. And third, the genetic information is defined by quantum non-locality. We artificially created this electromagnetic and acoustic fields, or vice versa, read them directly from chromosomes. This allows us to intentionally influence man as nobody else is capable of doing now, including medical professionals or biochemists. And as a result of transmitting this wave structures upon man in the form of electromagnetic fields, man can grow a new kidney, a new liver, a new pancreas, new blood vessels, etc. That is, we can now practically regenerate organs and tissues of man. We have started with animals and have now applied this technology to humans. Heavy cases of viral diseases, heavy incurable genetic disorders, all these are cured by the linguistic wave genetics. We do already have cases of practical applications. For example, viruses can be killed in a completely different way without application of any chemical drugs. We can also treat genetic In 2010, Nobel laureate Luc Montagnier undertook that the transmission of the wave phantom of DNA from one water tube that contained DNA to the water tube that didn't contain DNA. For how long did you conduct similar experiments ahead of the experiments by Luc Montagnier? And why is your technology more advanced than the technology of Luc Montagnier? We were ahead of the group of Luc Montagnier precisely by 10 years. Because in 2000, we staged a crucial experiment on a much higher level than a one of Luc Montagnier. When we transmitted the information from the pancreas upon rats, which didn't have a pancreas, we killed the pancreas with the Alexan poison. This is a so-called Alexan model of diabetes. Those poor rats without a pancreas were dying, and we transmitted information read by the laser upon these sick rats, but this was not the radiation of a laser. We used the secondary radiation. This procedure was based upon the theory of localized light, and this rat recovered. Luc Montagnier used the information above the DNA segment consisted of 110 pairs of nucleotides. While we transmitted a huge amount of genetic information, and more precisely, more for genetic information that allows sick animals to regenerate the absent pancreas and survive. We can compare the genetic information about the pancreas with the information about the building of the muscle universally with professors and students, while Luc Montagnier transmitted information from a segment of a text. Add the difference between the group of Montagnier and us, 
lies not only in the theoretical explanation, but also in the technical side of experiment, and this difference is crucial. And that is why, while his data is convincing, it concerns only a small portion of the possibility for transmitting the genetic information. Their equipment is very primitive. They simply use a generator that produces a 7 hertz electromagnetic field, and this is enough to read the genetic information. On our side, we have used more sophisticated equipment based upon the facts that our chromosomes are the sources of a coherent, that is, laser field. Since it is a laser field, we have decided to create a system which would model this field of a chromosome laser and so we've used a laser that produces a specific wavelength, and that is used by our chromosomes of a rat wavelength. We've used a helium-neon laser, a special one. It has a special polarized field, and that is why we were a success of radiant, not simply a DNA segment as it was done by Luke Munier. We were capable of reading a huge amount of information about pages as a whole, and so our foundations, both theoretical and experimental, were more advanced, and we have achieved better results being ahead of Luke Munier for 10 years. Tell in more detail about your successful experiments in Toronto in 2001 and 2002. You have treated the chemical induced diabetes in rats with the transfer of the genetic information. It was read from the wholesome organ of a pancreas of a newly born rat of a given genetic line. Also, please discuss the other part of the experiment concerning the transferal of the genetic information from one genetic line upon the other genetic line of a given bacteria. Our experiments were reproduced by the Canadian research group, which was supposed to independently verify our results. In principle, our results were sensational. We had four groups of rats, each one with 15 rats. The Canadians did everything except for the major procedure. We were responsible for the major procedure, which consisted in operating the laser. Everything else was done by the Canadians. The shortest distance for the transfer of the genetic information was one centimetre. We have transmitted the laser beam right upon the pore of a rat. Though it is important to point out that the, not the beam itself is the carrier of the genetic information, but the secondary field. But the laser beam was present. We had both the laser beam that transmitted the genetic information and the secondary electromagnetic field. We have transmitted the genetic information upon 15 rats. The second group of rats was located in the other room, 3 to 4 meters away, also 15 rats. We have transmitted the genetic information upon these rats as well. While the secondary electromagnetic field, which was coded by pancreas that is, it was containing the genetic information about pancreas. The same way we have transmitted the genetic information upon the groups of rats, each with 15 rats, but after taking them apart into a different location in Toronto, 15 to 20 kilometers from the place of the experiment. After the Canadians had processed all the data, blood tests, blood sugar levels, they discovered all the animals had survived, whilst animals in the control group had died. Animals could have survived only if the case of the pancreas regeneration, the blood sugar in the rats, sick with diabetes, had fallen from a very high level to a normal level. And we proceeded to the second part of the experiment, which was no less significant. We had chosen two lines of some specific bacteria. One line was insensitive to a very strong antibiotic, and we were successful in transferring the genetic quality of sensitivity to this antibiotic. As a result, we had transformed the insensitive line of bacterium into the line which is sensitive to the antibiotic. Our technologies are patented, and everybody can use them. Let us move in this direction. In this way, we can use correctly financial resources, which we will spend now for the research in this direction. Secondly, we will protect humankind from the non-sanctioned use of the linguistic way of genetics. Tell us about your last discovery concerning the programming of stem cells via wave genetics. We have created a technology which is in fact a discovery. It consists in the wave of quantum control over stem cells. We can record some specific genetic information upon stem cells. We can program them, we can transform them into competent cells so that we get our desired specific type of cell differentiation. 
We order a stem cell to become a muscle cell, a bone cell, a nerve cell, etc. Medical professionals and biologists cannot do this at this point. Now they will be able to. 75% of patients cannot get stem cell therapy for many reasons. First of all, it is not always possible to find a donor. Secondly, even after stem cells are attained, biologists do not know how to manage and control stem cells. They inject them and get cancer as a result. Contrary to this, we have specific technologies which allows us to get a patient's own stem cells, program these stem cells and then inject them back into the patient.